If you reach the end of the line on your Terminator X, HP, or even your Dominator input-output channels, Holly's Can-I-O module can easily add more. Up to eight multipurpose inputs and eight ground PWM outputs. That includes thermistor inputs for Terminator X users. These channels can be configured as frequency, 5 volt, switch 12 volt, ground, and PWM outputs. Expand your EFI's capabilities with more data channels. Add more sensors and accessories easily. With the pre-terminated CAN connector, simply tap into your main harness on your Holly ECU and configure your sensors with the Holly EFI software. Let me show you how easy it is. Our Mustang packs a Terminator X that's left us with just a few input channels left. It's the perfect candidate for our CAN-IO module. Here's the additional sensors we'll be adding. A transmission converter drive pressure sensor, a pre-intercooler air temp sensor, trans temp sensor, a single channel EGT sensor, a shock travel sensor, and a drive shaft speed sensor. It's best to draw up a diagram so you can stay organized and make sure the installation goes smooth. You'll want to jot down all the sensors on a grid and then map them out wire for wire to the pinout. Here's the 34 pin connector pinout. Pre-terminated wires include a switched ignition, ground, can and module ground wires. You won't have to mess with these, but it's a good idea to know where they go. These are the available connections. White pinouts are all signal input wires, while the black pinouts are signal output wires. The red pinouts are 5 volt sensor power. Blue pinouts are sensor grounds. Inputs and outputs are designated by a number in the Holly EFI software, so make sure to make a note of this. Looks like we'll be using only five signal inputs. Here's how we wired them. Only our thermistor inputs will require two wires, while our EGT sensor will connect to the CAN bus. All the rest are three wire connections. We're also designating the color of the wire to make sure it's going to the correct pinout. This will speed up the configuration process in the software and help with troubleshooting should the need arise. To keep our wiring bundled and protected, I'm using Holly's three conductor shielded cable. With a tough protective sheath and added RFI shielding, it's a solid choice. Make sure the pinout to your connectors is also correct as they have a sequence as well. We're using three different GT150 connectors and the race pack sensors use the Molex connector. Let's install all the sensors first to determine the length of the wiring. Starting up top, we welded a bunk to the discharge tube and then went ahead and installed an air temperature sensor. Our header already had a bunk, so the EGT sensor was a quick bolt-on. Before you mount the CAN EGT module, take note of the ID on the back of it. We mounted ours behind the dash, making sure we could reach the I.O. module. For our converter drive pressure sensor, we used Earl's adapter fitting for a quick inline swap. On our power glide, the out is the lowest port on the transmission. We tapped a 3 8 MPT hole in our trans pan for the temperature sensor. For our drive shaft speed sensor, we mounted a two magnet collar on our drive shaft and used a supplied bracket for the speed sensor. This race pack sensor uses the USM Molex connector. For our shock ride sensor, we mounted it on the right rear tire parallel to the shock. It also uses the USM Molex connector. With our sensors all installed, we can now start on the wiring. Crimping and terminating wires is tedious work, so take your time. It's imperative to get some good solid crimps, and that starts with using the right tools. I'm using Holly's ECU ratcheting crimper tool. Once you've crimped on the pins, it's time to pin our connectors. Take your time here and refer back to your diagram. To unlock the main connector, use a small screwdriver and simply push up on the small white tab on the bottom of the connector. This will unlock the pins and allow you to insert or remove them. Once you have all the pins inserted, make sure to push them through till they stop. Once all the pins are fully seated, push the white tabs on top of the connector until they sit flush, locking the pins in place. All that's left is to connect our ground wire from the main harness, preferably to the battery. We used an existing ground junction that has a direct connection to the battery. Let's go ahead and connect our harnesses. We can also connect the CAN bus connection to the main harness. The CAN-IO module should be connected into the main harness CAN connector directly. Let's fire up our laptop and jump into our Terminator X software. Our CAN-IO module requires Terminator X version 2 software, build 51 or higher, which means your Holly ECU might need a firmware update as well. Download it at holly.com.
Watch this video here to learn how to upgrade your firmware. Once you've updated your firmware, make sure your I.O. CAN module is plugged into the main harness and your CAN to USB dongle is plugged into your laptop. Go ahead and launch your version 2 Terminator X software. Let's go ahead and download our tune from our ECU and open it up on our Terminator X software. To configure inputs and outputs, the inputs outputs ICF must be present. Since we're already using inputs and outputs, it automatically appears from our configuration file. If you don't have this icon, add it by selecting it from the toolbox. From the drop down menu, select Add Individual Config. Then select IO Directory and double click on the default IO file. You should then have an IO icon. To configure our inputs, click on the IO button and select Inputs tab. The input setup screen appears. You can see our trans brake input that we previously set up. From here we can pull up our working diagram that has all the details we need to configure our sensors. Let's go ahead and fill in all the new inputs with a recognizable name. There's only room for 18 characters so be creative. Go ahead and click enable for all our new sensors. Let's start with our converter pressure. To configure the input, select type. All selections for the CAN I.O. module have CAN in front of the type such as CAN 12V, CAN Ground, CAN 5V, CAN 20V, CAN Digital Speed Frequency, and CAN Thermistor. Since our pressure transducer is a 5V input, select CAN 5V. You'll get a notification that an input type has been changed allowing you to configure it. Our configure button should highlight, let's go ahead and click on it. On the sensor setting screen, we can set our configuration. The great thing about using Holly Race Pack sensors is that most are already pre-configured in the software. We can then select our sensor from the drop-down menu and be done with it. If you're using a sensor that is not on the drop-down list, you can select Custom 5V. This will allow you to enter custom parameters. Keep in mind you should know the scaling to enter for your sensor. Voltage values can be entered at the bottom and the corresponding sensor values entered at the top of the layout to form a linear graph. For our pressure transducer, we use part number 554-136. Go ahead and select it. It automatically loads the calibration for that sensor. Let's go over some of the parameters on the sensor setting screen. Units will automatically be populated for predefined sensors. You can change it if you'd like, we're going to keep the default setting. Format is how many decimal places will be shown. Up to three can be chosen. If there's any offset in the reading, you can use the offset field to correct it as well. We'll keep it on the default setting. Sensor minimums and maximums. These values are only required if you're using the switched caution, timing, or PC warning outputs. The values are used to set the low or high side cautions. The last thing we need to configure is our CAN setting button. For CAN device, we need to make sure that the CAN I.O. module is selected from the pull down. For CAN channel, we must select the input being used. Remember that the inputs are designated one through eight depending on what pinout you used. For CAN bus, select CAN bus 1 for HP and Terminator X users. Dominator users must select the proper channel since they have the option of using CAN bus 2, which is wired to the J3 connector. CAN ID is the number behind our CAN I.O. module. Ours is 955, input this number in the field. Okay, the broadcast rate is how often the module sends data from the module to the ECU. This range is in Hertz. You want to set a reasonable number for this value. Setting all the values to 100 is not desirable unless those speeds are necessary. For something like fluid temperature that usually doesn't change more than once per second, a value of 1 through 5 Hz is adequate. For something like fuel pressure where you might be looking for a quick drop, setting it to 50 through 100 would be ideal. For outputs, the same thought applies. Set the output rate only to what is necessary. For something like turning on a cooling fan, 1 Hz would be fine. If you're triggering something at the launch of the car, set it to 100 Hz. Let's finish configuring the rest of the sensors. We'll use most of the defaults. Go ahead and select back to go back to our input tab. Let's finish configuring our sensors. Next up is our pre-intercooler air temp sensor. Let's select the type. This will be a CAN thermistor. Now we can click on the configure button. We'll go ahead and select our Holly manifold air temperature sensor from the drop down menu. We'll keep all the default settings and make our way into the CAN setting button. We need to select the CAN channel, which is input number two. CAN bus is okay. Let's punch in the CAN ID 955. And we're done here. Let's go back to the inputs tab. Let's move on to our trans temp. This will be the CAN thermistor input type. Click on configure. From the drop down menu, let's select Holly CTS for coolant temperature sensor. We'll stick with the defaults. Let's set up the CAN settings. 
CAN channel is input number three. And like before, the CAN ID is 955. Let's go back to the inputs tab and set up our EGT sensor. For type, since the EGT sensor has its own module and is not part of the IO module, we can choose the fix CAN option from the drop down menu and define the module on the CAN setting screen. Select configure. For type, we'll select Holly EGT. We're going to leave the default settings. Let's go ahead and configure our CAN settings. For CAN device, we're going to select EGT1 channel. For the CAN channel, we'll select channel A, which is the only option we have. And for the CAN ID, we'll use the number behind our module for our EGT sensor, which is number 78. Now let's go back to our inputs tab and set up our shock travel sensor. Our shock travel sensor is a 5 volt sensor, so we'll set it up as CAN 5 volt. Hit the configure button. From the drop down menu, we can select the race pack shock travel sensor. Ours is the 8 inch variety. We're going to keep the default settings and head on over to the CAN settings. The CAN channel is input number 4, and the CAN ID is 955. Let's go back to the inputs tab and set up the drive shaft speed sensor. The type on this will be CAN digital speed slash frequency. Let's hit configure. Let's go over some of the settings. For type, you can set miles per hour or RPM. There are some other choices for specialized use, but these are the most commonly used. Pulses to average should be set to one. If there is a reason to average the pulses, you can increase this number. Pulses is how many triggers of the sensor occur on one rotation. Since we have a two magnet collar, we'll enter two. For gear ratio, we'll enter 373, and for tire diameter, 28 and a half. Finally, let's set our CAN settings. Our CAN channel is input number five, and CAN ID is 955 like before. As you can see, setting up inputs is straightforward. Setting outputs is just as easy. To learn more about configuring outputs, check the link in the description below. All we have to do now is upload our new calibration to our ECU. So if you're needing to expand your data and sensor capabilities, look for Holly EFI's CAN I.O. module. It'll make adding extra sensors to your current Holly ECU a walk in the park. Learn more about Holly EFI systems at holly.com. <laughs>